we finally got a new post for this Friday. Now, if you're wondering, yes, this is a very weird format, but of course I am on limited time. So I thought I might as well just record this and do this in this sort of format. So please do bear with me, but let's get right into it. Okay, so we got a new blog post today, February the 2nd, and it talks more about Vulcan. Now, if you do not know what Vulcan is, if just let's say you're not of the tech technical savvy type, um, for any game that you played on PC for the last, I don't know how many years, probably long time, we'll just say long time. It has been made with a graphics API, which is basically DirectX, and this is made by Microsoft. So it's been around for a very long time. A lot of the games that are on PC use DirectX. And then more so a couple of years down the line, Vulcan came out. Now Vulcan is being developed by the Kronos Group and AMD as a, you know, as it mentions, a very low level overhead cross-platform API. So in short, it just allows more efficiency with the way that graphics are being presented for the games. And in my opinion, you could just watch many different types of videos where it's a far more superior graphics API compared to Microsoft's DirectX, in my opinion. If there's anything that it would improve, obviously it's performance, that's the biggest thing. So why is this a big deal? Well, according to the first part of this blog post, uh, Matt mentions, we plan to support Sandbox over multiple decades. So we want to launch on a modern graphics API and have no baggage when it comes to supporting new GPU features. We don't wanna end up in a position where we have four different render pipelines. Source2 already has Vulkan support and Valve sponsors and contributes to Vulkan, and they've been willing and kind enough to keep sharing improvements to the Vulkan render system with us. Pretty much to kind of like sum this up, they're just wanting to future proof the game so it allows them to do more things and utilize the GPU hardware. Not only that, as it says here, Valve is a sponsor and a contributor to Vulkan, so they kind of help in terms of you know funding for the developers who are working on Vulcan for this research and also uh, sponsor it as well too which is really cool to see and even for Valve they're still consistently again giving code or just information to Face Punch to kind of make the game much better so and it mentions in the second uh, part here which is this isn't going to magically make the game look or perform better by itself but we gain access to a new set of APIs to help us further push for more performance with GPU driven rendering. The next part is what I'm really, really, really interested about because I know a lot of people uh, have mentioned from time to time, I've, I've had tons of conversations, especially with a lot of you within the community, talking about if you're able to play this game with a potato PC. And this is probably the best answer that they have put out officially as of right now, which is supported hardware remains the same. Our minimum target is really anything from the last decade rather than something that struggles to run Half-Life 2, which on the Nvidia end is going to be the GTX 900 series from 2014 and the AMD Radeon 300 series from 2015. So I think this is really good. I'm, I'm pretty sure that majority of people possibly have something along this way of, of requirements for GPUs. Plus there has been these newer systems for GPUs that are getting uh, support for just improved performance. So AMD being one of them, I'm not sure about Nvidia, but it's really cool because that means for one, if you have one of these type of GPUs, that means that you should be good to be able to play Sandbox and you, your questions have been all answered. So that's a it's a really great thing that they finally brought this out. The other two things that they mentioned is obviously in terms of issues, it's not going to be perfect in terms of there's so much different types of hardware. And I know that's one of the biggest banes when it comes to PC uh, gaming is that if you're a developer making a game, depending on the type of game, if it's a 3D game, one of the biggest issues is trying to test different types of hardware and trying to make between minimum spec and recommended spec so that you can be able to play the game properly, even if you have a potato or as I would say, like garbage PC. And the last part of this, which mentions about the shader compilation in short, it's just saying that before what they had with their compiler, usually for every single game that you play nowadays, there's always like this really long time it takes to compile all the shaders that are needed so that you're able to just kind of render the game and then play it. And this is saying it's about 10 times faster, which is great because it kind of helps out with their shader graph system, which they've mentioned as of recently. That's absolutely wonderful. 
And it's kind of cool because not only that, they also mentioned that they are looking for graphical programmers and you can put your application and stuff like that. So it seems like they're wanting to expand in terms of face punches, wanting to expand, having more people on board with this because they are making a good amount of progress, but they could make even more progress if there's more people that could assist them. So if you're into that sort of thing, like I said, the blog post will also be linked down below. But in short, what can I take from this entire post? I know it's very short, very condensed, nothing super crazy is one people who possibly have the minimum spec or could be considered potato PCs or older PCs that are aging. You have a chance to run sandbox. This is great. This is absolutely wonderful. Not only that, but at the same time, this also means for basically everyone uh, over time, the more that Facebook starts to improve on uh, using uh, the Vulcan API and any sort of updated either code or, or whatever it is that they're getting from valve directly as they are a supporter of vulcan that basically means that they're kind of ahead of the game in terms of certain things which allows them to future proof the game on the back end graphically for certain things like it mentions and they don't want any sort of hiccups or anything or even to worry about that because the entire focus of what they're trying to do is specifically with the systems of the game uh, how you make games, all this other stuff. So that's all I have to say. I have rambled on way too much. I got to go do some other stuff. So of course, uh, again, blog post will be linked down below. Thank you guys so much. We will be back once more, either for next week or whatever other videos with the normal stuff. This was just something I wanted to put out. Nice, quick and sweet, straight to the point without me rambling. So thank you for watching. I shall see y'all in the next video. Thanks for watching.